Welcome back, everybody. Chef David here from New Wave Studio Kitchen. We want to wish you guys all a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday Season. So today we're going to make a really nice, rustic, but elegant, intimate dinner for you and your loved one. Okay, we're going to do some amazing winter-style vegetables. Brussels sprouts, which we're going to cook with smoked bacon. We've got some beautiful, beautiful new potatoes pulled from the ground. And we've got these amazing carrots. Uh, these are organic carrots. There's different colors. I think there's quite a few different uh, species and colors of carrots. You guys should look it up and take a look. Um, and I'm going to do something uh, a little different with these that may surprise you. Um, so we're going to roast carrots and we're going to roast Brussels sprouts. And I'm probably going to have to do them in a big oven because I can only get so much in here at a time. But in here, in the bottom, I'm going to do these amazing rosemary potatoes. I'm going to get them started cooking while we come to the big hit. And the big hit today is going to be filet mignon, but we're going to make it into a classic beef wellington. The beef wellington is a filet mignon that's been lightly rubbed with some Dijon mustard, wrapped with some good quality ham, or even better, prosciutto from Italy, and then encased in puff pastry and baked, and it should be beautiful. The key to beef wellington is a classic uh, accompaniment called duxel, which is mushrooms and shallot and butter that have been cooked down until all the water comes out and it's dry, and that gets molded over the ham and the mustard with the filet wrapped in pastry, baked in our new wave oven. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna get started first on our Brussels sprouts. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set my PIC, my Dorlon cookware, you know, great ceramic. I'm gonna set this on sear, and I'm gonna get some bacon lardones in there. I think you guys have seen me do this before. A lardone is just a really thick slice of bacon that's been cut into about a quarter inch bar. You see that? So they become little bars. What happens is when you cook them this way, they render down these crispy little awesome things. So we're going to get these going. We're going to get a little piece of garlic in there, a smashed clove, not finely chopped or sliced, just something that I can pull out later. But I just want that oil from the garlic to get into my beautiful Brussels sprout dish. I usually have my pastry scraper here. You see that sizzle already in the door line? So we're gonna go big bacon today. We're not playing around, it's Christmas. Spend a little money. And this is very good bacon. It actually comes from Wisconsin, just north of where we are. And a very famous uh, smokehouse, famous for their ham and their bacon products. All right, so bacon's in. We got this going. Now, I wanna show you something on Brussels sprouts, because I get this question actually a lot on our, our chef at New Wave uh, website. So sometimes you get Brussels sprouts that are really big and kind of cabbagey on the outside. See how giant these are and see how the stems spread out? And then sometimes you get these young, really little tight ones. And people always ask me how to clean them. Well, cleaning them is pretty simple. But we just trim them off the bottom. If any leaves fall off or any leaves don't look good, just get rid of them. They go into compost. So you see here I've got a leaf with a little brown on it. I don't want that one. Brussels sprouts really aren't that expensive, and we don't need to eat the brown one. And then all I'm going to do is cut these in half, okay? And these I've already trimmed, and I want to show you the ones on the cutting board I haven't trimmed. And then I'm going to toss these with that bacon, some fresh thyme, a garlic clove, just a pinch of black pepper. And I'm going to go easy on the salt right now because you probably heard me say when you add salt to vegetables, it pulls out the liquid makes them steam, and I don't want these steam. I want them roasted and brown and caramelized, okay? The real big ones, if you want to quarter them, you actually can because the stem runs all the way through. Now, unlike a cabbage, where the stem is really hard and hard to digest, hard to, to chew, this stem inside the Brussels sprout, perfectly okay to eat. So the bigger ones, you can actually quarter them if you can see that, okay? Leaves, of course, they go in our compost. And then I'm gonna show you these little baby ones. Here the uh, bacon, take it off, it's off to the races there. We're gonna hit that with the black pepper now to let the oil from the black pepper come out through the heat and the fat of the bacon. Now the little guys, these look a little rougher on the outside, so we've gotta take some of the outer leaves off. And these, the real small ones, I leave them whole. There's no reason, just trim the stem a little bit and the rough looking leaves, well, they gotta go into compost. They'll come back next year as Brussels sprouts little trim, dead leaves gone. This is the easy part of the, the dish, this whole dinner actually. 
So I like to do, I like to get some of the easier things done first, kind of as a warm up. Okay, nasty leaf there, gotta go. This guy I think we can cut in half, huh? Brussels sprouts are amazing. If you've never had them, please try them. It's a great time of the year to be cooking them for your family. Very healthy. And I always eat them roasted. Sometimes with some onions, sometimes with bacon. If I have a vegetarian friend over, obviously we skip the bacon. We just do beautiful onion. Sometimes you have, deep down, it's a little more dried. I don't throw it out. I trim it off. It's a Brussels sprout. doesn't have to look perfect. Okay, one more, and we're done. And I'm going to show you how simple this is. Now I'm going to pop these in the oven. Now what I normally do when I cook in my new wave oven at home is if I'm doing a dish with a vegetable, many times I put the vegetable underneath and put my roast or my chicken or my pork roast on top on a rack and let it all cook together at once. But because I'm doing three different types of vegetables, it's three different types of cooking time, so we're going to have to split it up. But if you just want to do the potatoes and a beef wellington, there's no reason potatoes can't go in now and get them started, and I'm actually going to do that. Bacon, getting rendered, getting crispy, looks good. Now we need some thyme. You guys see me use this all the time? All the time, get it? Just go in reverse and pull the leaves off. The little stems are very tender, and those can actually stay in there. The rest, of course, will go back into my compost. But look up fresh thyme. It has a chemical in it called thymol. It's supposed to be very, very good for you. Anti-inflammatory, I think. Somebody sent me an email on that. Let's see. But a friend was just telling me about that the other day, but I didn't have enough time to research it for you guys before we did this show. Because after all, it's Christmas. Get it right in there. I love these little leaves. It smells amazing. When it hits the heat, it smells even better. All these stems, right in the compost. Now, last big aromatic. Pull off a piece of garlic. Take some of the paper. Back of the hand, just give it a crush. Look, the clove comes right out. Okay? I think I showed you guys this before. Sometimes when the garlic's a little older, it actually starts to germinate. See that in there? It's actually trying to regrow. I always pull that out. When I was first starting out cooking, I had a chef tell me that this can give people hiccups. So I don't know if that's true or not, but I always take it out. And look, I'm not going to chop this up. I want this in here hold. It's just going to flavor that bacon fat with a little bit of garlic. So I want the bacon to come through on the Brussels sprouts, not garlic. But I want a little bit of underlying of that. Okay, now, many people you'll see when they render break bacon down like this, they want to drain off this fat. I'm not draining off the fat because I want that fat coating my Brussels sprouts. Okay, so there's that. So now, there's a lot of bacon in this dish. I kind of did that for a reason because we're going to be here for a few hours today. See how fast, bright green these got from the heat of the bacon? Okay, that's it. Now right, here's what I do. Clean sheet pan. Right on there. Okay? These going to pop in my oven. Let's get the Duxelle started. The Duxelle is mushrooms. Shallots. I'm going to puree the mushrooms. Not puree them, but I'm going to grind them up. And what you have to do is get them chopped so finely, the best way to do it is in a small food processor. If not, you're going to sit there with your knife and you're going to be there for a little bit. But let's get these guys going because the finer they are, now some people describe the cell as a, almost like a mushroom paste. I don't. I still want a little texture in it. And of course, they're going to break down a lot more when you cook them. So we get this on, we could probably get a few more in the top. We just turn this guy on. Okay, that's ready. Now, I want to get some shallots in here. I think you guys have seen me use these before. It's in the onion family. Very common in Western Europe cooking, very common in Chinese cooking. And they're smaller than an onion, and they're much, much sweeter. And the paper sometimes a bear to get off. I see a lot of chefs, they, they just peel off a big whole layer so they don't have to waste time. But 
I don't think we should be wasting all that shallot, right? So if you got to scrape out a little bit, it comes off. And what I'm going to do with these is two different things we can do. I see some recipes, some chefs call for putting it right in your food processor to make them small. I don't like that. Again, texture for me. Okay, what I want to do with these is I want to get some very thin slices and the reason I want to do that is because I want to get them melting. If I have them pureed in with the mushrooms, you're not going to see the texture, we're not going to get as much flavor as we've gotten from them before. So, we get this started, we get some fresh thyme in here, once again, peeling them backwards, but believe me, it's worth the effort. Let's get some more thyme in there. Little stems are okay, big stems are not okay, but do the work. Trust me, the thyme brings a dimension to this that you wouldn't believe. Okay, just a few more, and then we're going to get the mushrooms in. So I've got the mushrooms really finely chopped in the little food processor here. And again, you could do it by hand if you want. I didn't want. Okay. Let's clean up. There we go. Now these are going to go straight in. Now you can see how wet they are. Mushrooms have an incredible amount of water. So. If we put this right away, when we assemble the beef wellington, the problem is simple. What happens is all that water releases makes the pastry mushy, and we don't want that. We save this one for later. It's actually going to go into my carrots. Where's my dish? I got a dish here. Okay, so shallots, thyme, these mushrooms, and then I'm going to do something different that. You don't see a lot of chefs do, but once these dry, and it takes a while to dry out all that moisture, I'm going to hit it with a splash of good Spanish sherry vinegar. I just like the dimension that brings to the, to the dish. But you see how wet these are. It leaves water on my finger. We have to cook these au sec. In French, they say almost dry. So we want to steam as much of that water out. So keep them moving, and you have to give them a flip. Cooking mushrooms like this. The first inclination most cooks have is let me put a big blob of butter in there, which is what I would love to do, but it's going to take longer to get the moisture out, so don't do it. All right, so let's move on real quick. Let's do potatoes. So here's our new wave, all right? And I'm going to get, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook the potatoes in my bottom, put my Wellingtons on top and cook those. But I'm going to get the potatoes. Actually, we can start those now, and it couldn't be simpler. I have these potatoes. Now, the problem is some are bigger than other ones, and we have to make sure if we want them to cook evenly, the big ones are not going to cook at the same rate as the little ones. That's obvious. You guys know that. So what I do is I pull out the super big ones, even the Peruvian ones, and I'll cut those in half so they kind of match the smaller ones. Not that big a deal. Okay? I like to cut them in half lengthwise. Also, it gets a nice caramelization on the cut side, which is really nice when you present it. Okay, and this is just gonna get a little olive oil, a bunch of black pepper, and some fresh rosemary. That's gonna be amazing. Now, if we wanted to mix in a little shallot in there, we actually could. Nothing wrong with a little onion flavor in your potato. We could take care of that. And then I'm gonna get the rosemary in, right? And we'll do, something nice on the bottom of this pan. See what I mean when it doesn't peel easy, you end up losing a layer. But in the interest of time, we gotta lose one. So look, let's cut this one same way. We're gonna cut it thin, but we're gonna cut it country style. All right, and these can go mixed right in with the potatoes. And then rosemary. Now, again, you could chop this up finely. Not me. I like them in whole like this. I don't mind the rosemary after it's been cooked. Some people, uh, they want it chopped fine. I don't think so. 
I'm already crushing these leaves so that rosemary oil is already coming out. These, compost. Okay, olive oil, good extra version, two tablespoons. A lot of black pepper on this. Simple. See the color of that olive oil, how yellow it is? It's beautiful olive oil. Just make sure everything's coated. Now again, what aren't I putting on here? Salt. Salt's gonna pull the moisture out, and I don't want these to steam. I want them to roast and caramelize, okay? That's gonna be a beautiful dish. Shallot jumper, let's get these guys in. Get all that shallot and olive oil, all that goodness in there. I'm actually gonna save this and do my carrots in there. So here, watch what we do now. Get this guy back on. And this is gonna go 350. Cook time, let's do 45 minutes for now. We're gonna let them go probably about 25 minutes and then we're gonna have our beef wellington to put inside and both will come out at the same time, okay? So I'm gonna finish drying off the Duxelle and as soon as we come back, I'm gonna clean up a little bit. We're gonna get our carrots going and then we're gonna assemble amazing beef wellington that you can make for you and your loved ones on Christmas. Welcome back everybody, Chef David here, cooking Christmas dinner for you in the New Wave studio. Okay, so we got our potatoes roasting away with fresh rosemary, some shallots, olive oil. In the oven over there, I've got beautiful Brussels sprouts with amazing Wisconsin smoked bacon. Last vegetable for this beautiful dish for you and your loved one are gonna be these organic carrots. We've got these yellow ones, we've got the traditional orange, and these amazing purple red ones that I really like. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, let me show you how to get these prepped real fast, toss them in some olive oil, get those in the oven. In the meantime, this is the Duxelle. This is the, the mushroom, uh, which is the base flavor for our Wellington. And you can see it's dried quite a bit. There's not a lot of moisture left, and it smells amazingly fragrant, but I'm gonna let it go. I, have, I lowered the heat down to 175. I'm just gonna keep smearing it out and let the water keep evaporating, all right? This is a key component to beef Wellington. Carrots. All right, here we go. Very simple. I always like to leave a little of the stem on. I think it makes it look a little more rustic. I've actually been to some restaurants in Europe where you get the whole thing on there roasted in the oven. They're very rustic, but it's all edible. All this is actually edible. Matter of fact, many times when you have the leaves on the end of the carrot, I save those and I chop my use them like parsley. Uh, these also small animals, grow nuts for. All right, so big ones, small ones. We, you know, we have to do the same thing we did with the potatoes. The other thing you could do is pair up your big ones, right, like this. Get these super guys, compost, and do another dish with this on another day. And then save the smaller ones and cook those. Depends on how many people you have. And the reason I tell you that is because the small ones obviously will cook much better. In order to make the big ones, cook at the same rate as the small ones. I'd have to cut them in half uh, lengthways at least, and in the case of the big one, I may have cut it this way, but then they won't look uniform. And the, what I'm looking for here is something very, very uniform. Now these are organic, and many times on a carrot you'll have little dirt up here, it's just soil. You can rinse them, you can wash them off, you can eat it, it's just soil. It's not gonna hurt you, if you know where your carrots come from. If you don't, well, can't help you. Also, you'll know that the organic ones seem to have more of these little hairs growing off the side. They're just little baby, baby stems. And the reason you see them on the organic ones, you don't see them on the ones in the grocery stores because those have been scrubbed or cleaned or processed. These haven't. These came from the farm to us. We're lucky out here in this part of Illinois. We have quite a few friends that look after us. So the big ones I'm going to use in another dish. Also... Next time you're in the, if you go to a good grocery market or even a farmer's market, keep an eye out. Sometimes you'll see baby parsnips like this, but even better, you'll see something called parsley root. Have you ever seen a big green bunch of parsley? Well, it grows on a root, it looks just like this. It's actually amazing to roast in the oven or peel, slice, and saute. A really beautiful flavor. You actually see that quite a bit in Germany. All right, so these guys, you will cook another day. So these actually be really nice wrapped in foil and roast it actually next to a campfire. Uh, if you ever wrap baked potatoes in foil and put them in a campfire on the embers, amazing. 
This does wonderful like that. If not, put them right in your oven with a little olive oil. They'll be amazing. Let's save those guys for another day. All right, so these ones, very simple. Where's my bowl? This is the bowl I did the potatoes in. It's got olive oil in it. That's it, some shallots. Now it's going to have some more olive oil. It's a simple dish. It's Christmas. I don't want to spend all night in the kitchen. A little black pepper. Okay? And then in this, they're going to get two things that you don't normally see with carrots. They're going to get a big, fat pinch of chives. And they're going to get my caraway seeds. Believe it or not, caraway seeds and carrots are very, very common. And this is going to be about a good teaspoon. You can also grind these up. But I like the whole seeds. I like the way they taste better. It's like when you get them on bread. Real quick, just give them a toss. And these are actually going to go right on a pan in the big oven again. That'll save us some time so we can get to Christmas. And again, when you mix something in a bowl, don't leave that behind. It's got to come out. See how beautiful that looks? That can go away. Let's get these in the oven. Look how amazing these Brussels sprouts look, guys. I don't know if you can see this real quick. And I'm going to keep them warm so we can eat them later. But look, the, the big ones that I didn't cut in half cooked at the same rate the big ones I did. Now these are going to go into a beautiful bowl. And I'm going to keep them warm in my warming oven for now. And we're going to serve this all together. It's going to be amazing. I just want you to see that real quick. I get happy when I see that. Put these in the warming oven. Let the carrots cook. Now let's make beef wellington. Easiest thing in the world. So we've got filet mignon. We've got a peeler for some reason. We don't need that right now. Two beautiful pieces of filet. See that? We've got prosciutto. We've got Dijon mustard. Okay? And I've got puff pastry. Now, puff pastry. Set this here. A couple of tricks about puff pastry. First up. It'll come with a lot of flour if you make it or you store by it. Either way, I'm okay with that. Get the flour off, okay? Give it a flip. Wipe your board, okay? Picked up a couple of herbs on there. I'm good with that. Now, what you want to make sure you don't do is on the edges that are cut, don't squeeze it. If you squeeze it, it won't rise. This is going to be a very simple dish. I'm going to form them, and I'm going to grab a plate and get them in my oven. And when we come back, we're going to have the most amazing dinner. But let me show you how to do this real quick. A couple of very simple steps, guys. Take one of your fillets, okay? Take a little bit of mustard, not a lot. And just get it all over the fillet. Okay? Both sides. Kind of make a mess a little bit, but you know me. I'm always making a mess here. Let's do them both until they're done. Okay, I like a lot of mustard. Some guys, especially my friends, a couple of restaurants in New York, put the bare minimum of mustard, but I like the big flavor. That's me. Okay, now we take two pieces of Italian prosciutto. This is domestic. It's not from Italy. This is from a pretty good company called Volpi. Take one of the fillets. I set it down. Black pepper right on top. Tiny pinch of salt. The reason is prosciutto is salty, right? Right over like this. Okay? Doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, it's going to be wrapped in pastry. So this guy's sitting here, and you can see the top. Now it's wrapped in the prosciutto, huh? I take a little bit of my duxelle. It's going to go right in the middle. Not too much. It's enough to form a little cozy bed. This guy goes on top. And then I like to do this, a little more on the top. Now, around the edge, if we want this to stick, we are going to need a little bit of a light egg wash. I mix mine with a little olive oil and a little water, just like the way it works out. You don't need a lot because we're also going to put it on top. All right. Now, what you want to do here is we want to form this without making too much dough. So we're going to have some trim. And I like to trim it in kind of a circle. See what I'm doing here? All right, even on this side, we can even move it. 
All right? We can save that for something else or we can do something. Then this just basically, we are going to a little more egg wash. And we're just going to fold it right over the top like a little parcel. Okay? Over the top. Now, you can form it a little bit. And let's get some egg wash on it right now because these are going in the oven in just a few minutes. I'm going to show you where they're sitting at the minute we come back. And this is going to get a little score across the top, not going too deep, just to give it a little garnish after it bakes. As soon as we come back, I'll show you how to finish the dish. Welcome back, everybody. Chef David here at the New Wave Studio Kitchen for our quick and simple but elegant Christmas dinner. Uh, we got cleaned up real nice here. Uh, we've pulled out our Brussels sprouts with Wisconsin smoked bacon. We got the beautiful organic carrots, tossed with some olive oil and a little caraway. And now we got the piece de resistance over here. Let's take the lid off, put it on the rack. Beef Wellington. And underneath, I'm going to show you. Let's take these guys out because I want them to rest for a second, right? Nice and crispy on the top. It's going to be a little wet on the bottom, obviously, because it steams a little bit. But let me get my towel here. Take my rack out, right? Put this somewhere safe because it's hot. Okay. And over here, this is the best part for me. This is my favorite part of the dish. Incredible roasted potatoes. Real country style. I like the Peruvian purple ones. These are called Russian banana potatoes or fingerling potatoes. And I've even got some little rose colored ones. They're actually, when you cut them, they're pink inside. So we're getting really good access now to beautiful food. Now this is very simple, very classic. I don't want complicated. It's Christmas. I don't want to be here all day in the kitchen. After we made our beef wellington, we take some of our homemade beef stock and we make a very, very light uh, sauce or actually a gravy. Um, so you'll see me sometimes when I'm cooking steaks, I use something called the demi glace. It's reduced quite a bit, it's very thick. This one's a lot lighter, but it has a really, really intense beef flavor. And what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I like to do, I like to get this right over my potatoes. It kind of runs around, it's dark, it's rich. We go a little more pepper, little sprig of sea salt. Now. On the Wellingtons, I use this. I recommend you get one. This is called a probe thermometer, and this one happens to be digital. And what it will do is, without damaging anything, you can get right into the meat and see the temperature. We're at 130 degrees. It's about medium, and I'm okay with that. Also, many times you're making beef Wellington before you put the mustard on the steak, you can grill it on a grill, get marks, or you can sear it in a pan. I like to do mine the way I did because I want to get more of that mushroom and ham flavor. Let's take a look, see if we did okay. All right, you guys tell me if that's okay for you and your loved one on Christmas dinner. If that's okay, oh, make it a mess, Shep, as usual. And if this is okay, guys, try to make this dish at home, please. And I'd like you to send me a picture. Brussels sprouts with the Wisconsin bacon, beautiful caraway carrots, and this, you can see the duxel around here, a little bit of the prosciutto, perfectly cooked, just about medium rare medium, and the roasted potatoes. Merry Christmas, guys. Happy holidays. Be safe. Be with your loved ones. Get cooking and live well for less. See you soon.